to Norman Williams Public Library. Um, I am Liza, the program's uh, librarian, and I just want to remind everybody to turn off their cell phones and other distracting devices before we get going. And uh, I'm glad you could come today. And if you wish to get our newsletter, if you don't already, there's a sign-up sheet on the credenza there. The format's going to be very simple. I'm going to do a brief introduction, and then our guest will have the floor, and she'll allow time for questions and answer. And um, followed by book signing in the back. She's got her books back there, both hardcover and paperback. So I've been looking forward to Anne Aikens uh, speak about her collected advice, A Girl's Guide to Life, A Cautionary Tale. And, uh, I think it's a great combination of serious and humor. Would you, would you call it a uh, serial comic? <laughs> right now, things are serious, and it's nice to have some comedy to help us deal with them. Anne earned a BA in French literature from Colgate University. She's written and edited in various capabilities, both freelance and for corporate entities, in fundraising, marketing, technical writing, and legal briefs. But her writing that brings us here today is the gathering of her Upper Valley Girl columns. Back in the late 1990s, Anne found herself in town here, apparently, working at the Woodstock Inn. And after regaling a friend who was also working at the Woodstock Inn, um, another tale of what was going on in her life. Her friend suggested that she write for the Vermont Standard. And in 1996, she started the Upper Valley Girl, Upper Valley Girl column. Is that the name right? Upper Valley Girl. Yes, thank you. Okay. Um, after nearly 20 years, the column was picked up by the White River Valley Herald in Randolph, where it continues to be published. As she says about the collection, it's her best uplifting advice to help young people Avoid the potholes in the road of life without missing the sights along the way. So without further ado, please help me welcome the young kids. You can just ignore this. Is this thing on? Nope, you're on. I meant this thing. Yeah. Thank you. I'm like super mic'd. Um, thank you all for coming so much. And... Uh, I was going to say braving the foliage traffic, but it seems to have died down, mercifully, and for those seeking parking. Um, I guess what I'll start with is housekeeping. There's an email sign-up sheet at the back, and it's like um, MailChimp. You can unsubscribe at any time, and a link will come to a video that I think you, you will find amusing. Um, so it's not spam if you see that. It's not taking you to um, the dark web or um, AI robots or something. So um, that's great. Okay. I really, really, really appreciate reviews. And if supposedly, if you don't buy the book on Amazon, if you go to my page on Amazon and attach a photo of the book itself, you don't need a photo of you. Supposedly, you can upload a review. If you cannot, you could go to... Goodreads, which I recommend because then you, you end up keeping a list of everything you've read. And when people go, I'm going on vacation, what should I read? You're like, oh, I don't know. I read so many good books this year. You just can send them to your, your page. And Goodreads is, of course, owned by the Amazon. Um, to review on Amazon, if you happen to buy a book there later, you had to have spent $50 in the past year which is funny to most people I talked to. They said, I spent $50 this week, <laughs> but we're in Vermont, and people <laughs> aren't really that fond of Amazon. I mean, I don't really, I don't want to badmouth Amazon. Um, I'm just telling you, there are other options, including on my website, anakins.com. Uh, it shows you where you can buy the book in Vermont stores. So uh, I will be selling them after, I can inscribe them. And I work in Randolph, I live in Bethel, if you want me to inscribe something uh, later on, I will come to you. Okay, so also uh, don't forget to get a bookmark. They're very colorful, <laughs> like my book cover and my website. There's a, so caution. And uh, one of them, I think the one I brought here has like my social links. If you get one with a, a QR code, my friend who made the bookmarks did not know that 
QR codes, free QR codes can expire. <laughs> so, so in most cases, I X that out. So um, let me see. I will tell you what these artifacts are. Now, I can't go in front of that thing, so I'm going to ask people at certain times to come forward for me because it, it will the reverb will blow your eardrums out of the room. And I already did blow my eardrums, so I can't hear you very well. And if I'm talking too quietly or too softly, just like, oh. And, okay, so this <laughs> is a lighter my friend made me with uh, the book cover on it. I know lighters aren't in popular use these days, but it's very cool. And of the people that sign up for my email list, somebody will win that. And, or if they prefer this thing, which would be hard for you to figure out what it is. I had no idea what it is. My friend gave me that too. It's so you can read one-handed. And they're pretty. There's a different one back there, so you could look at that one too. And, um, I mentioned things, this is kind of like a funeral, like, you know, where they have like the artifact table. This, <laughs> I mentioned that you should have three things every day that like lift you, that you just run into every day. I start my day with this particular coffee spoon and I mention it in the book. And I don't know why I like it so much, but every day, like I, I tap the coffee grounds off and I put it away and I'm like, I love you. So, um, I also mention, I think, scouting in the book. So <laughs> this is my, uh, we were the cardinals the t of the Taconic Council in New York. If somebody wants to um, come forward, you could pass this around. If it falls apart, uh, it's already falling apart. I'm not worried, thank you. Thank you, Emily. And uh, th this is, I mentioned sending nutty postcards. It has this, it was a cool thing that happened on my porch once. So I took a photo of it and it became my Christmas card, but I had leftovers and so I send weird postcards to my little nephew. So if somebody wants to pass that around, <laughs> somebody <laughs> named Emily. And uh, you don't have to pass anything else around. I, um, I mentioned in the book that, <sighs> It's a book for young women so that they do not waste many years doing things I did wrong. It's not a book of advice like um, Tony Robbins or other successful <laughs> advice givers who say, if you do things the way I do them, you will have this helicopter and this private jet on this beautiful island with this stunning family. It's, it's more about how not to do things. <laughs> Don't do things the way that I did. So. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm prone to mourning a little too long, whether it was a relationship or somebody's passing. And so I, uh, I had uh, something I was mourning and I was crying a lot. And so I collected tears in this little vial and I brought them to Maine and I dropped them in the ocean and I said, I will, cry more tears, but I'm done with these. And this is a um, COVID, from a COVID test kit, and my <laughs> sister-in-law hates single-use plastic, and this is not single-use. I've used it many times now. This is mentioned in a passage I will not read today because somebody already heard it at my book launch, <laughs> which was legendary, but when I, you get to uh, true facts near the end. It mentions an incident um, with an animal, and this is what I'm talking about. <laughs> I see uh, nods of recognition. So, last but not least, I always like to give a gift to the person that came the farthest. Emily's laughing. Um, who thinks they came the farthest? And I don't think, I don't care if you came here from Alaska to visit somebody. I see snickering. Where are you from? Mexico. Where? New Mexico. You're from Mexico. New Mexico. New Mexico, thank you. The other Mexico. So you can have, um, I think this one's better. 
I made compilations of my columns uh, mentioned by, uh, aforementioned by the goddess Liza Bernard, as in the dog. <laughs> no, as in the saint. <laughs> Liza, as in the saint. Um, uh, I wrote my Upper Valley Girl column for the Vermont Standard, and why it's called that is on my website and possibly in the book. I don't think so. But I made compilations of them every five years when I went to my Colgate reunion. So you are entitled now to not just the best of Upper Valley Girl, <laughs> 1999 to 2009. This was reprinted with permission of the Vermont Standard. <laughs> Everyone loves a prize. Do you want me to sign it later? Can I just show, at the, on the back, it has, a, it's entitled, Why I Sold My House in Vermont. It was that historic year, it, it snowed so much. I actually had to dig a hole to get through <laughs> onto the porch into my house. And somebody walked by, saw me do that, and thought it was hilarious and took a photo. Well, thank you. Thank you for coming all the way from New Mexico for my book reading. That's very flattering. And uh, so thank you, uh, Norman, Willi Norman Williams Public Library. And my friend who works at a library calls libraries the best place on earth. And while I took it for granted as a child growing up, um, our parents certainly didn't, even if it was just to, as a place to drop us off for a few hours to get out of their hair. But one library moment for you. I was doing a book report on the electric chair, for some reason, <laughs> my choice, in around seventh grade. And it had a very creepy cover with a black and white photo of an electric chair that I Xeroxed, which was a verb back then. And using the card catalog, I found a book on New York Governor Mari Mario Cuomo um, because he made reference to the death penalty. And he said he didn't believe in a death penalty because it assumed that a man was irredeemable. And my 12-year-old or 13-year-old brain went, wow. <laughs> like I just went, wow, like I've never thought of anything like that before. And that is why libraries are so cool. And I miss the card catalogs. So a uh, quick disclaimer. Um, I always say the book became my master. It was like the puppeteer and I was the puppet. And there was stuff I would want to take out of it when I was endlessly editing and proofing it. And <laughs> the book would go, oh, no, you're leaving that in there. <laughs> and I'd be like, OK. And one example is something that I thought was corny. And when I gave the book to my nieces, for whom I started it as a PDF, um, just in case my plane went down, shoot, they would have all my advice. Um, my niece was next to me when I gave it to them, and, and, and they cried, and that was like so heartwarming. And they uh, sat down and, and started reading it in my room, in my apartment in Bethel, and uh, one niece laughed out loud, and I go, what is it, what is it, what did you think was funny? And it was that corny thing. So uh, some things I think are a little, I think it's not a YA book, because it, it's about life, right? And, and life can be dark, and it covers some dark topics, like writing a eulogy, for example. So I leave it up to people if they want to give it to someone that's under 18. Some kids are very advanced and, and can handle that. And YA books are pretty racy these days, apparently. So I leave it up to the parent um, to decide. But I, I suggest 18 plus to um, cover myself, shall we say. <laughs> so, on with it. I'm going to read a, a couple. They're not painfully long, and I don't even know if they're good representatives of the book, because there's a few themes that sort of run through it. It is written, as you can tell, I like post-its, and it's written in this sort of snippet um, format. So uh, one person, I went to their house, he said, I love your book. And I said, you read my book? He said, 
oh yes, it's in the bathroom. So I don't really like the idea of bathroom reading in general, but if you read it in pieces, which is how I recommend it, I just ask that you read it in order because it, it builds on itself. And you'll miss some of the context if you jump around. But you do whatever you want. You be you, as they say. So I will um, read a section from the foreword and a couple of the chapters, and then I'll let you pick what other chapter you would like me to read from. And <laughs> by popular vote. Okay, uh, in the foreword, it ends with, life is hard. Can you hear me okay? Okay. Life is hard. Your caretakers weren't about to tell you this when you were little because they didn't want to make you an anxious mess and life certainly didn't seem very hard as you soared with Peter Pan at Disney World or splashed around in a puddle. But life can be terribly difficult even if you're not a refugee sleeping on a stone slab, sweeping it with a piece of cardboard, your entire past washed away in a flood or war. Surely you know that by now. It's just a good place to start this modest volume with an acknowledgement that despite many, many joys on earth, it's going to be at times wicked hard. As parents I once read about told, told their children when whiny, adapt or suffer. Adapt we must once we have established this precept. Any levity you can afford daily life and bad situations is a good idea. And a fellow author <laughs> tells his kids, this isn't in the book, it's on a post-it actually, uh, regarding things that they don't want to do, say they're all in the car somewhere and they're whining, like, we don't want to go do that. Uh, he says, if you can't get out of it, get into it. <laughs> which I've been using myself, which I think is fantastic. Many, many things are not in the book. Okay, so then I'll pick from kindness. And this is called, Be Kind to Your Elders. And a lot of it is about being kind to yourself, a lot of the book. At a certain age, the YPs, the young people, the YPs throughout time have come to think that they know more than their elders. Weirdly, because of technology, it is in fact true for the first time in the history of the world that younger people actually do know more than their elders because so much tech is taught in school and the YPs have time to figure out the rest on their own while their parents work, launder, cook, fix the car, pay bills, volunteer, etc. seemingly in their beds where many YPs live. I lived in bed myself to write this book when I had no desk and I learned the appeal. This is not meant to be snotty. We felt the same about our parents. But the YPs cannot imagine how irksome it is when we ask you how to do something techy and you show us quickly, show us so quickly that we can't possibly follow it. Or we have to ask you a second time and you let out a fat sigh of annoyance like, you dumb old dinosaur. Yes, we're dinos, soon to be extinct. Please be kind. <laughs> uh, uh, I love this one. Most, most of the, the funny stuff in the book is really um, stuff I gather, what other people have said. This is called, <clears throat> and it's the longest one. Enjoy seemingly peripheral people who pass through your life. I blew out my knee playing tennis one winter, and rather than going the surgery route, I spent, money, I spent months going to a physical therapist. The expense was killing me, but he was animated and energizing, and we were politically aligned. As he tortured me physically, we'd rag on various clowns holding office worldwide. In between our political rantings, he'd tell me little stories, including tidbits of wisdom he dropped on his small kids and patients. For example, I tell my kids if they don't like someone, too bad. There's plenty of room in the playground for everyone. You don't like a kid over here? Go over there and play with a bunch of rocks. Plenty of room in the playground. <laughs> and I'd get in my car and write these down so they're verbatim. He has no idea. 
he's in here <laughs> yet. Um, some of these guys come in here, hedge fund guys, and they're so tightly wound, their bodies are in absolute knots. I just tell them, go home and relax. You need to relax. What good is all the money in the world if you're miserable? And I know he really did say, <laughs> say that. I don't cuss. I don't see any need for it. My wife does. She can be the one to do that. I don't need to. <laughs> I miss him. I've had rolfers, dentists, cabbies, plumbers, UPS workers, ferry crews, and chocolate-covered strawberry dippers confer upon me all sorts of wisdom and entertainment. I'm a nuisance in that if you're with me, I'll slow you down in your travels via my seemingly needless interactions with strangers. But if you're not in a rush, you just might learn something, or at the very least, try on a new way of thinking about things. It's fun. Hmm. Oh, uh, okay. At the beginning of every chapter, I have a little introduction. Sometimes it's only a sentence. And this chapter is accomplishment. I'm sorry, I'm very dry mouthed. And then you're going to hear all the goo 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 over the microphone. <laughs> okay. Accomplishment. I chose the above for this chapter title instead of career or success because some people are interested in neither of those things or don't attain them, but they accomplish a lot. And some people lead a peripatetic life where they flit from interest to interest and become a jack of all trades, master of none. This, in my book, may define neither career nor success, but it is certainly accomplishment. Take credit for it. So here's an actual passage from that chapter. Ah, uh, yes, yes. Lottie the bus driver. As kids in a woodsy suburb of New York City, we are blessed to ride school buses to our elementary school with terrific bus drivers. This fun canceled years later when the town became fancy. Then no one walked or took buses. All were chauffeured to school by adults or siblings who had their own cars in high school. A shame. Lottie was my favorite bus driver. She made us sing songs, which surely some kids hated. Most songs lovely, others asinine, one about eating worms. Lottie put us in a buoyant mood before we even got to school with her cheer and caring. She affected many little children daily, some of whom surely didn't have it so great at home. She uplifted us. She was important. We should all be so lucky to lead lives that matter that much. So, <laughs> I run my high school reunions. And to choose the chapter that you'd like me to read another passage from, I'm trotting out a device that I, I know it doesn't look like it, but I actually made this myself. <laughs> it's the applause meter and it's very sensitive and it's very accurate. So, uh, these are the chapters I could read from. Because we're being recorded, I don't want to read from sex, which is often the winner. Um, Romance, dangers, or frolic. Okay, these are your options. So with a, uh, it is applause, but you can, you can hoot or do whatever you like. Uh, so romance, dangers, or frolic. Who would like me to read from romance? Nobody wants romance. I like that one. Um, dangers. Polite smattering. That's what the meter tells me. Uh, frolic. <laughs> frolic. 
frolic it is. <laughs> okay. Be a nutter. So I'm a fan of outlandish and childish antics. I don't mean obnoxious or disruptive, just the kind that says, let us now enjoy this mischief. Flash mobs, brilliant. Ideas, when a meeting is going on at work that you're not part of and there's a glass window or door, walk backwards past the meeting, perhaps robotically. Devise dazzling group costumes for Halloween, like that one with the doctor, nurse, and the woman giving birth. <laughs> her baby, a grown man's bald head, coming out onto the gurney between her knees. Reenact the movie scene, totally deadpan in a restaurant, and see if anyone notices. My friend Jay from the Comedy Cellar wanted to get a tattoo on the tip of her nose. Then at dinner, when her grandma asked her about it, she would innocently ask, what? Like nothing at all was amiss. So please be a nutter. When you're old, people will just think you've lost your mind. Start now so they know you're doing it on purpose. And I think I would actually like to, I, I, there's something, oh, I just like this about romance. I wish the, young, the YPs hadn't left because, uh, oh, this is sort of up their alley. I'm sorry I'm overriding the applause meters. <laughs> <laughs> readings. Uh, it starts with romance. Ah, romance. This could be an entire book. A rich topic I'll tap dance through in no particular order. <clears throat> Excuse me. Actions speak louder than words. Remember, this is under romance. Talk is cheap. Generally, it's more what you, they, do, not what is said that matters. Some words are good, heartfelt compliments, and some are vital. I love you. I'm lucky I met you. As Lori said <coughs> with dismay when we won a second place ribbon at a high school water ballet competition in a fancier town, a ribbon? Where's the hardware? She wanted a trophy. Talk is a ribbon. Action is the hardware. And I think I'll leave with that. Does anybody have any questions? And if anybody knew Kevin Forrest at the uh, Vermont Standard, who was the editor there for many, many, many years, and he was just the coolest, the first booklet, I call them, <laughs> People say, you wrote a book? I go, no, I wrote a booklet. Um, a compilation of my columns, 1996 to 2004, is up there. And you can read Kevin's introduction, which I remember the first time I read it, I, I was kind of taken aback. But then it grew on me over time. Thank you so much. I thank you so much. These things are always fun. And I love that libraries do stuff like this. <laughs>